Verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Okay. So my version says, don't be fooled. Fearing people... Oh, no, that's, that's what I was writing about it. The scripture says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Now, again, it doesn't say fear is a dangerous trap. It says fearing people. So let's put it in categories. If you fear God, it's not a trap. It's freedom. Right? There's a scripture in the Bible. It's amazing how the Bible speaks. There's a scripture that says, um, where David says, I am free in the boundaries of your love. And people say, well, how can you be free? Like, if there's boundaries. But the truth is, if your people in the world think, oh, yeah, I'm free. I can do what I want. You know, young people are like, I can do what I want. It's like, well, if I let a child play wherever they want to play, you know you always say don't play on the road. Mm-hmm. Guess what happens if you let the child play on the road? Mm-hmm. You're, you're a target. That's not freedom, no. right? Freedom actually has boundaries. The boundaries of God, the boundaries of his love. So it doesn't say fear is a, is a dangerous trap. It says the fear of man is a dangerous trap. Now can we go to Matthew 16, 22, please? Matthew 16, 22. I read to you, you're going to read it again, yeah? But in the, between that, I want to say the reason it's a dangerous trap is because it's the... Well, we'll find out from this, actually. Matthew 16, verse 22. To 23. Then, um, yep. then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, the Lord shall not happen to you. Sorry. <laughs> Far be it you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Oh, yes. and 23. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You, um, you are an offense to me. But you were not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Amen. Okay. This is the version I've got. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that, uh, that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem. And that he would suffer many things, many terrible things at the hands of elders, the leading priests and teachers of the religious law. Okay. So we know that obviously Jesus' calling was to set the captives free, to break strongholds, to mend the broken broken hearts, to heal people, and also to die on the cross for us. And his sinless blood was going to set us free, and we have eternal life through that. We know that. So he has to die for us, right? Um, uh, well, and the religious law. Um, he would be killed, but on, but on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside. I remember Steph preaching about this. And you know when somebody <laughs> wants to distract you from what he did this, and, and they're coming from a good place. Sometimes like, no, no, you, you think it's true. You can't do that, right? So, so Peter pulls him aside and, says, and, say, and began to reprimand him, saying such things. Um, Heaven forbid, Lord, he said. This will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter, listen, and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for me, right? He uses the word trap for me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's point of view, Amen. right? So he's saying, I have a destiny. I'm moving forward towards it. I have to die for you so it'll be fulfilled and I have to do God's Amen. will, right? I have to do that. And you cannot bring this fear of man, which is fear of what man can do for me. If God is for me, who is against me, what can man do to me? But Peter wants to put this fear in him. He may be coming from a good place. You know, Peter, you realize in the Bible, Peter used to say stuff when he was nervous. So he'd just say, no, no, don't do that. Because like, he wanted to look good. And Jesus would say, yeah. And, 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 and Jesus saying, get away from me, Satan. You're a dangerous trap for me. He says, you're not putting me in this trap where I'm too scared to go forward. We are... Always moving forward. So as I was going through this thing with a whole fear and everything, the only way out of it was learning what fear was actually doing and what a lie it was. But then always moving forward, pressing towards the mark. Everything else is a distraction. Fear is a distraction. Anything that's not on that path. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go. I want to do... Might as well do it now. All right, this is a quick diagram. This is you with your big head. All of you in your skirt because there's more women than men here. And then this is your path in life. You see it, yeah? Then we have God. Ah, 
God up in heaven is the gift giver, the purpose giver, and this is you getting there, because I believe we are all getting to that purpose, um, and this is God saying, well done, my good and faithful servant, you've heard this before. Okay, you can tell I like God, right? Mm -hmm. Amen, we thank God. Okay. So, that was actually for the next part. On this page, if you want a subheading for this preaching, or teaching, whatever you want to call it, is life and <laughs> his writing. Movie Dales. Can you read it? Yeah. It's quite clear. Yeah, okay. I've just felt that wrong. Mm -hmm. Godliness. That says godliness. Life and godliness. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Second Peter verse one. These are things I want us to remember, so I'm writing it down here. So we can come back to it, amen. So Second Peter verse one, three. Rachel, you don't have the NLT version on there, do you? Second Peter. One. Yeah, read that one. That's the best one. One. Oh, sorry. Um, it's Second Peter one verse three. Does anybody understand this so far? Yeah. Yeah. No, what it is. Right. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Is anyone there? Yeah, cool. um, the new living translation is not coming up. So. Oh, okay. All right, just read any, uh, any version. Okay. Simon Peter, a bond servant, and Apostle Jesus Christ. Okay, now it's come up. <laughs> <laughs> this letter is from Simon Peter. As so Sorry, he's keep freaking out. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. The faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour. Amen. Yeah, no. Is uh, yes, three. Verse 3, yes, please. You want 2 and 3? Yes. Okay. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for God's godly life. Amen. We receive all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to Him um, himself by means of all his marvellous glory and excellence. Amen. Okay. Amen. Brilliant. I'm going to read my version. Exactly so. By his power, God has given us everything. Say everything. Everything. Everything we need for, life, for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who has called us to himself by means of marvelous glory and excellence. Hallelujah. Another version says um, God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. Amen. Pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. You're actually going to use this thing. So God has given us everything that we need for life. This is life. And godliness. Now this is all in line. You are Christians, amen? amen. amen. Say I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm right back with amen. Okay, so... All of you have a calling, you all worship God, you all have your own personal relationship with God. This is life and godliness. There's no separation, right? There's no separation. In fact, the other version says living a godly life. Amen? Amen. So this is your life. There's no church, Jake, and outside Jake. There is no things I have to do for the world as in, oh yeah, I'm just doing this to pay the bills. Unfortunately, you don't get to live like that. It's nothing to do with you, right? Mm -hmm. You are... As a Christian, 
As a Christian, you are, without a shadow of a doubt, an innovator. The reason I know you're an innovator is because you have the power of God and a calling from God. That's fact. Innovation is the next thing that's going to happen, right? God doesn't do the same thing twice. He doesn't need to. Even if you look at John the Baptist, who is the new, who was the new Elijah, right? They called him Elijah. His, his, it didn't happen the same. There was nobody like you on this planet, right? There's no one exactly like you. Nobody's got the same fingerprint. You are made and you are an innovator. And this is fact. You're an innovator. You are an... That's meant to be you. An influencer. We're going to come back to this and see where this comes in. But you are an innovator. And God has given you an innovative dream. And he's given you a purpose. And the reason there's going to be times where the devil tries to come in and bring fear and you're going to doubt is because it's never been done before. You have no point of reference. Somebody says, oh, yeah, you've got to work in a call center. You wouldn't be like, oh, no, it's too hard to get there. You've seen people work in call centers before, right? But if God says you're going to be the king of Zamunda, wherever that is, that's harder to believe, right? Yeah. Right? So you are, without a shadow of a doubt, an innovator. And, of course, you're going to have to use faith. Because the opposite of faith is sight, and you've never seen it before. Because God's going to do something new through you. Amen? Amen. Let me do a new thing in you. That was a song you should listen to. Okay, and you also are an influencer. Okay, so, and we are always moving forward. Hallelujah. So, we already said, as an uh, uh, innovator, you're going to need faith. And this is your life's journey. In this life's journey, you are also going to need, let's just do it like this, faith, right? What does the Bible say about faith? Do we need to go to scripture? I'll just say it. I'm going to move it, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so what is faith? Does anybody remember the quote from the Bible? We're not going to get there. Somebody's going to say it out. Tell us. Huh? Something that is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh God! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Can I remember to write it? No, I'll write it later. Okay, so faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things unseen. Okay? Um, what was I going to put here? Okay. Okay. Alright, so can you turn to Mark 2 verse 1? What's the time looking like? 52. Okay, we're going to worry, skip. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's go to yeah, Mark chapter 2, and we're going to go straight to verse 4. Because the rest of it was just context, but you'll get the point. We're going to go straight to verse 4 and 5. And when, and when they could not come nigh unto him. Amen. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man onto the mat, right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed Ooh, stop. man. stop. Say that line again, just before that. Seeing what? Seeing their faith. Oh, stop. Say that again. Seeing their faith. Everybody say it. Seeing, seeing their, their faith. faith. Come on now. Jeez. Carry on, please. Yeah. Seeing their faith, Jesus saw and said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Amen. 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 So, we're going to go to faith. We have a whole page dedicated to faith. Amen. 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 So, I listen to Pastor Terry Savell every morning. She is wonderful. And she... Uh, taught me that, well, reminded me in the Bible, it says, seeing their faith. So although the opposite of faith is sight in the sense that you can't see it before you do it because it's innovative, it's never been done before, so, you know, and it's not in your life, so you have to have faith without it, without seeing it, amen? But yet, it doesn't stop you from seeing faith. And the reason Jesus could see their faith is because they were using, they were getting this man healed by any means necessary. It was a crippled man, 
it was too busy they couldn't get through to get healing jesus is there and he's healing everybody like great and they're trying to get in and so they went to the extent where what did they do cut at the top of the tent the room. So no respect for the tent they're like this here is happening right that's literally how we're going to be that's real faith so he saw the, the extent of what they were going through to get this person down for the healing. Amen? So you can see faith. You can see faith at work. I'm sure there's a scripture that's, uh, that says that exact line. I can't think of it at the moment. So you can see faith at work. Everybody's understanding so far? Amen. Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break down faith even more. Faith is one of the most simple, it just says it plainly. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things unseen, but it's still so hard to grasp it. It's an ongoing thing because it's a real revelation, right? It's like the funniest thing is when people, <laughs> people try to debate about Christianity, like, yeah, I've read the Bible. What? What do you mean you've read the Bible? Like the Bible's literally living. Like I've read the Bible. I listen to audio Bible, so it's easy. Just listen to it, and I've read it. I literally read it about five times, six times a, a year, maybe even more. It depends how quick I'm going through it. I just get new revelations. Stephen was talking about new revelation in Job. That's like that's the closest thing is me saying, "Yeah, I've read the dictionary. I've read it. Yeah." I think it's a, what you grasped all the information from the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so we're gonna break down faith here. Okay, so I got carried away. Not good to do the message. Okay, so this is how we're gonna break down faith. There's loads of women here, so let's use this. A woman is getting married. So Hallelujah. There. Hallelujah! It's all of you. I can see it. <laughs> this lady's getting married. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Get married again. Hallelujah. Um, and she's walking past the shops. She's looking for a wedding dress. She's got a whole crew with her. All the people, one of her maids with her, too, because it's her special time. And she she gets to the shop and she sees this perfect dress. Right? She sees this perfect dress. First element is vision. Yeah? Yeah. You can see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, not only does she see this perfect dress, not only does she see it physically, she doesn't stop there. She sees herself in the dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, she's a size, what's a bit, let, let's, say, let's say she's a very beautiful size 22. Yeah? Yeah. She wants to get down to a size 14. Wow. In four weeks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just threw out a time. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's possible with God. Yeah. Amen. 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 So she sees herself in the dress, which means she sees herself as size 14, yeah. right? But she doesn't just stop there. She sees the dress. She sees herself in it. She sees herself size 14. Mm. But then she takes a step further. She sees herself in the chapel with her husband, with the priest. Yes. Yeah. Getting married. Amen. Crying the vows. Unbelievable. She sees the whole picture. She can feel it. She can smell it. She can even see people's heads turning up. Man, she's just getting in that dress. Like, oh, they're yeah. crazy. And she's walking. It's her best day. Oh, oh princess, queen. <laughs> All that stuff. This is her day. She's, she's in the shop smelling it. Feeling it, she yeah. can she can feel it, she can hear it, she can hear the chance. Everyone's like, the gods. Oh my god, you're beautiful. No one is gonna stop that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So she oh god, sorry. She sees all of this with great clarity to the absolute detail. She sees the whole vision. Okay? Amen. Now I'm breaking it down with these elements, the four elements. After that, you have hope. Now the hope. Is the substance, yeah? Mm -hmm. Substance of things hoped for. Now this substance, she doesn't just stop there. She takes a picture of this dress, along with her whole vision and the scene and everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. She takes that home and she goes and puts it in the mirror. She says, that's not enough. She goes, takes a picture of that picture, goes onto Photoshop. She gets a picture of her head from another picture, <laughs> puts it on there. 
Well, she obviously lived in the top of you probably know. Puts her head on there, puts her arms on there. So she's just got a plain dress and her body on there. She sees herself literally there, puts it, put, um, makes that image, puts it on her mirror. And every morning she walks up and she looks at that picture. She sees her, she doesn't just see the picture and her in it. She sees the whole scene. She smells the whole atmosphere. She sees it. It gives her hope and. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Gives a hope and. <laughs> Is that before they come to the mental health hospital? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the hey, the opposite of faith is sight. <laughs> and she can see this. Hey, you're laughing. This is how I'm living at the moment. Hey, <laughs> man. So this, this, this whole scene, the vision in front of the mirror, all of this stuff that she's seeing, this gives her inspiration. Because remember, you're, she's not just seeing it. She's feeling it. She's in that moment. She can see exactly what's happening, right? And feel everything. She's experiencing it. This gives her inspiration and confidence. Remember that confidence. All right, so it gives it gives that inspiration and confidence. Okay. Now, if hope is the substance of things, sub substance of things hopeful. Yeah. Faith, faith is the substance of things hopeful. You can see the substance. So her husband, not her husband, they're not married yet. Her. her Sister, is she lives fiance, with? Yeah, she's not living in sin. Her, okay, her fiance because she's living in sin for some reason, and he comes <laughs> in, and he can see her every day praying to this, praying um, about this um, image. He can see her doing her confessions. I'm, I'm size fourteen. I can see myself. I'm beautiful. Everybody's loving me, and everyone's yes. gasping when they see me. And, and she does that whole experience every day. Sometimes three times a day, she's praying for it. Mm. He can see the substance. So nobody comes into the house. And, and, and says, oh, what are you hoping for? You can see the yeah. substance of her yeah. hope. But then you've got the third element, which is belief. Now, a wise man said, and I always say this, you interact with the world through your beliefs. Your words shape your beliefs. Yeah. yeah? That's why when Seth was talking about before you go to sleep and that scripture in the Bible... It's so important what you hear, what you say to yourself. You believe more about what you say to yourself mm. than anything else. So important. Even the words you use, clarity is so important. The reason why this dream is definitely going to have, have, have come to pass for this young lady who's getting married is because she's got the whole experience to the vivid detail. She knows what the chapel looks like. She knows what she's wearing, blah, 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 blah. And it's happening. It becomes so real that not happening is not an option. It's happening. Right? Because you've already felt it. Because yeah. remember, we live in the three dimensions of this world when there's more than ten dimensions, right? So when you can feel the other dimensions which God has access to, and maybe Adam and Eve had access to, but after the sin they was broken off. Mm. Amen? Amen. It's real. That's what faith is. It's, it's experiencing outside of this into God's world. Amen? Amen. Amen. So um Okay, so uh, oh, lost my place. all right, so you have beliefs. So you interact with the world through your beliefs. So what you do is the evidence of what she believes. So you've got the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence the evidence of what she believes is now she's not just praying, she's not just seeing it, she's not just experiencing it. Now, she decides, right, I'm making a plan mm -hmm. to get to this size 14. Now, the truth is, once you get to that place where you can feel it, you can smell it, you can hear it, you've experienced in there, there is nothing that's going to hold you back for it. So this bit is a breeze. So she makes a plan of what she's going to do. She decides to eat properly. She decides to work out every day. Her mind is focused and she has clarity, right? That belief is the evidence. That belief is the evidence of her belief is the plan that she goes to make. Mm. Now you've got the last ingredient, which is what the Bible says. 
Faith without action, action is what? Dead. Dead. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, she takes that belief, she takes that plan, she puts that all together. She walks, wakes up, she sees the vision, she experiences it, she goes through that routine. Yeah? But hope is the fact that it's there and she sticks to it. The belief is the fact that she's written down a plan to, to match that. Everything's intertwined. Everything's integral. And then she goes to the action where she actually goes on the treadmill. She does that. She goes to yoga. She goes to dancing. She does whatever she needs to do to get to that place. Amen. This is faith. Yeah? Now, you are an innovator and you can see faith. You can see that faith, right? Yeah. If you were living with her, you can see the faith. This is what it takes. This is what it takes to get here. And here, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what it takes to get to the millions of pounds that you want and you expect to come because God has given you a budget to bless people and, and to find your husband. This is what it takes to get there. That's what it takes Amen. to work it, right? Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, so um, okay, let's go to Hebrews 10, verse 35. Did we not point that the other way? So it doesn't. Or maybe I could just put this behind me. I'll go back to you guys. Okay, Hebrew 10.35. Are you there? 35. Yes. Yeah. You're preaching good. God bless you. Amen. Thank God. Amen. It's all good. Just needs to open my mouth. Amen. <laughs> Are you Amen. there? Yeah. 10.35? Yes. Yeah. So do not throw away this confident trust in mm. the Lord. Amen. Remember the great reward it brings you. Amen. Say that again. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Okay, so who's saying that? That's Peter. So they all have this promise, and they all live in faith, and they use this. I'm trying to find a page where it says, confidence, all right? The Bible says, do not throw away your confidence. That confidence is that vision, and the confidence, and let's add inspiration. That confidence is that vision. It's experience in it, what you hope to happen. Now, let's talk a little bit about what Stephanie was talking about, the revelation, when she was talking about how God speaks to you in dreams and everything. Because a problem I think we have as Christians is one is my, one of my major problems was the fact that I didn't know how much to do. You trust and you have faith in God and then you hope that he's going to put it into your lap. Or do you do stuff? And if you do stuff, is that unbelief? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But now we know with that whole, God says you, you can see the faith. You saw the extent that people had to go to to get the healing. And... Einstein, Albert Einstein, who wasn't an atheist, um, some believe he was a Christian, I'm not sure what he was, but he definitely wasn't an atheist, he was a theist. And he said that imagination, visions, is uh, a preview of life's coming attractions. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's a preview of life's coming attractions. So you'll have a dream, and you'll have a good and perfect dream, and you'll cast it aside because you don't feel like it's holy enough because there's some church circumstances, and not from the preaching necessarily, but from the way people are as a church, you kind of feel like, well, that's not a holy dream. You kind of feel like that. I mean, the truth is, the truth is if you look at Joseph's dream, Joseph's dream was he was the star, and his 11 brothers were bowing to him, even his mother and father were bowing to him. That was a holy, purposeful dream. Now, it doesn't mean his, um, his motive was good because he saw himself, oh, everyone's going to be bowing to me. But that's because... Wait for it. <laughs> that's because throughout this time, I'm just going to have this line alongside, it's not separate to this. Um, uh, throughout this time, there is... What should I call it? You go through, let's say you go through the fire. When I was at, um, I was 15, 
threw me in a fire. I was 15, and I was um, at... <laughs> just been dumped by my girlfriend. And I uh, don't know why I needed a girlfriend at that age. But <laughs> I, went, I went to... Um, I went to uh, Ashburnham with the church and I was sitting there and the lady said, you stand up. And I stood up and then she said, God is going to write songs through you. And she said, you're going to make songs outside the church and inside the church. Amen. Now, this, the fact that she said inside the church and outside the church is going to come with its own problems. Because sometimes you have religious people in the church who have literally said to me, it's definitely like, oh, I like it when you do gospel music. And it's like, they have no, it makes them feel holy because they said, I like it when you do gospel. But they have no concept of the workings of God. Because yeah. one, somebody from the Christian community mm-hmm. is going to come out and top the worldly charts mm-hmm. with gospel music. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take fearlessness and boldness. Mm-hmm. And that's what I have in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I don't care. I've had conversations with someone, a drummer who's going to be playing for me. So, oh yeah, but I wonder, because you're Christian, whether they'll let you on this. Let me tell you something. When you come with fire, Amen. Talent that God's given you, gift and fire, nobody can stop it. And when it's God's time, it's time, right? Amen. My music, not to talk about it so much, but my music, gospel pours from my veins. There is a difference between church and worship music, which is for us. But worship music is not going to necessarily affect the person who's not a Christian who doesn't understand it. May do if they come to church, they come willing. But outside of there, they're not really going to understand the loving relationship between us and God. They're not going to understand your relationship, your personal relationship. They might not understand the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and all that stuff. But gospel is preaching the good news to them, right? So in some ways, worship music is not necessarily spreading the gospel. That's more for us edifying us. When we go out, myself and Steph, we go out. And we don't even sit there and think, yeah, we're going to put Jesus in here. We're going to put, no, we're genuine artists. Exactly the same as any other artist, Lady Gaga, all the crazy artists, exactly the same. The difference is because we have a personal relationship with God, it pours out of our lyrics. Amen? Amen. So we're not afraid to say Jesus. It doesn't sound corny because when you're coming with fire, people don't doubt you, right? They get it. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even know how I got that. So, yes, so we had, a, so I had that prophecy. When I got that prophecy, I wasn't thinking, yes, for the glory of God, I'm going to do it. Like, I wasn't not thinking that, but I wasn't thinking, yes, I just want to see your people come to you, Lord. I wasn't. That's the honest truth. I was 15. I was like, oh, my dream's coming true. Now, I knew I knew I had a confidence already. I had a vision. I had something in me that told me I, I used to say, yeah, I'm going to be involved in media. What I meant by involved in media is I meant entertainment. I didn't understand because I love acting was the first thing I did. I wasn't too involved in music. I used to sing background singing and then play a drums a little bit. And this woman prophesied. And that same year 